I'm put you out. They did something and then took and then put her out. Cause they took a queen shit from her and then put her out. They gonna take a queen shit from her right before 30 days and then brought her back. No! I think he knew what they could do according to law. Cause Esther was the exile. He was not. He was Persian. And if you remember, if you remember, it was the Daniel that received that Darius um, told Daniel, he said, I cannot be versed because according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, if I remember correctly, it, uh, a rule that, is, uh, that has the signet ring on it cannot be reversed. That's why I started talking to you guys about the signet ring. The laws that are made by the Medes and Persians cannot be reversed. So this man is Persian because that's the was in Persia. I said, Bashi had no hope. Because he went total. He separated from himself. He separated from her, according to the law, and they separated from himself. He went total like, he say me. You won't say me. Pastor David come at me with a consequence. And he said, he talking. He said, Jamie, you, you, you annoyed Pastor David. Ah, I started screaming and, and begging. You don't say me, that's a problem. That's a problem. You start calling yourself by your name? If I came up, call myself, if I'm talking to you, and I say, you disrespected Jamie. You disrespected Jamie. Run. 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 And I mean quickly, run. Because I don't mean you well. I don't mean you well at all. I don't mean you well. I mean you hurt. <laughs> I mean you pain. And a lot of it. But can't God bring a uh, beauty out of pain? So we know the God of the Romans 828, and, the, and we know. As I said, we know the God of Romans 828, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. I tell you this much a lot of people expect things to work out for the good. But they don't have a scripture right. You must be called according to God's purpose. Because then we know uh, all things work together for the good. That is a whole face law. And if you think it does work out for the good, I feel bad for you because you're going to get very, 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 very hurt. That's what all that's going to lead to for you is pain. Because whenever anything happens in your life, you will expect good to come from it. And when pain keeps coming from it, you won't know what to do. Why do a pain keep coming from it? I said when, when pain keeps coming from it, not if. Why is that important to know? Because you have opened the door to the enemy. And so he will keep sending pain for you. Why? You open the door to him, and here's the thing, just like I got a contract coming, you signed a contract. When you step on to it, say all things, you left out the enemy and throw, uh, okay, but all things work together for the good, uh, and you stop there. Oh, you're going to need somebody to pray over you, under you, smack you with prayer, put some prayer down your throat, with the, take this, and then bring it back up again, right, choke you with the prayer, <laughs> wrap prayer around you, you're going to need some help. You, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, need, you need help. Use the word of God, but definitely don't use it improperly. I'm just trying to recite a scripture. I get that. I do the same thing. And I mess up. I get that. I get when you're just trying to recite a scripture. I get that. You're just trying to speak over your life. Things are going hard. Things are rough. You're just trying to get a word out there over your life. I get that. I get it. Realize though that it doesn't matter. No one cares. Really, I'm not about the trying. Nobody cares. Everybody cares about you. Everybody cares about you. I'm telling you how important you are. If you were not important, then God wouldn't be after you, and the enemy would be after you too. What's the enemy's two, two?
two purposes to wear down the saints of the most high God, right? And to be accuser of the brethren. That says he's after you in two ways. That's his job. That's all he does. All night long, all day long. That's what he do. He work at it overnight, right? While he's sleeping, and he um at the during the day, he made plans. He got blueprints. He all he care about is you. Because you are more important than he is. If it's job, my job is not based around the enemy. My job is based around my job is based around making sure I praise and thank God for everything he's doing. So my focus is God. God is focused on me. Why? Because the Bible says that the but God commits love his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God committed his love, right? By sending his son to die. He didn't send his son for any other reason. He sent his son to go coals. He sent his son to buy you no clothes. He sent his son to eat no coals, right? And he sent his son to die. That was it. And then what does the Bible say after that about God's purpose? It's not his will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. God is focused on you. You are supposed to be focused on God. First Thessalonians 5, 18. You focused on God. He's focused on you. Who's focused? Who is Satan focused on? You. Because he knows by hurting you, he hurts God. Because he knows how much God loves you. So he said, oh, don't get it twisted. He does not. His war is with God. He, and, and, and he's stupid because he's already lost. His war, is, though, is with God because he's so mad at God. Because he wants God's throne. What an idiot. But he knows the best way to hurt God is to hurt you. Are you going to, you going to, mm, God help me. I can see, you can show me who a person cares about the most. Or I can tell you who a person cares about the most. But it's easy to see, isn't it? If I go around the church giving ever all the kids in the church birthday presents. All the, all the kids in the church, the, the birthday presents. You will watch the parents react, right, based on their kids. I get hyped over any kid. So my own Lord, I can cite it. But Miss Katie and Pastor Trent will be happiest when you give their sons. It's not that they won't be happy for um, Kristen Kraft's kids. But Miss Katie and Pastor Trent will be most excited when you give their kids something because they that there's a relationship there. They have a bond there. They can relate to their, their own kids. Likewise, it's not that they don't care about those other kids, but I know the way to hurt Miss Katie and Pastor Trent is to go at their kids. I can't believe I just said that, but that's we we're going so with it. We're pointing to God. Because likewise, the enemy is not gonna come after God. He can't do anything to God. He's stupid. He's too stupid. He's so stupid to make me itch. But how he can hurt God. That's why you know that God loves you. Because the enemy, right, only comes after you to hurt God. Past that, he does not care about you. Whether you eat, whether you don't eat, he don't care. He wants to hurt you. And the only way and the best way he can do it is to get you to hurt yourself. And the Bible outlines it. How he does it. But he has two jobs. A two to the brethren and wear down the saints of the most high God. By the way, to hurt God, he's coming after you. What did you do to Jesus? When Jesus was in the wilderness, why did Jesus go in the wilderness? To be tempted of Satan. Who drove him into the wilderness? Pushed him into the wilderness. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness. To be tempted of the enemy. And what did the enemy do? He didn't take stones and throw them at Jesus and say, turn it into bread. And throw stones at Jesus. He didn't do that. What did he do? He tried to he tried to get Jesus to do it to himself. He tried to get Jesus to do step outside of the will of God for himself. Because once you step outside the will of God, right? Love covers a multitude of sins only as long as you let it cover. 
when you step out of the, of the will of God for your life, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Once you stop saying thank you, Jesus. The Holy Spirit alight me. He said, Jamie, your father wants to be thanked. And I've been thanking God and thanking God and thanking God. I thank God all the time. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He was like, I'm not talking about him. He's like, you have not said thank you to him once without asking for something. It's not God. Someone else. And I said, oh, my Lord, you're right. I have not said thank you once. Because in my heart, I have such a big thank you for just you being you. In my heart, I have such a big thank you for just you being you. And the Holy Spirit said, but he can't hear your heart. God hears thoughts in the tents of man's heart. That man cannot hear your heart. So while your heart's screaming, thank you, Pastor David. Your fingers are text type of texting, but can I have? Thank you, Pastor David, but can you do? Thank you, Pastor David, but will you do? That man is one man. Thank you, Pastor David. And I'm talking about the pain in my life all the time that he's spending on this. Growing me, right? Through this. Developing me. He's still doing his job, right? That spiritual dad, but all the time he's spending on that. If I had my head on straight and he didn't have time to spend on that, he'd be spending time talking about other things in the Word. Or life. I'm gonna learn about life, like real life. Like I've life, I've been sheltered all my life because I didn't understand people and people didn't understand me. So I just did not have anything to do with them. And so when I when I wanted to learn about people, I watched TV. But if I didn't have him, right, right, if he wasn't wrapped up in doing this, and I mean, it's a, it has to be a lot of work. Just the meeting yesterday had to be a lot of work. I saw him look at his watch twice. He was running out afterwards. I thought to myself, I said, he put a meeting right before he had to leave, right before he had to run out. Because he cared about me. Thank you, Pastor David. I don't know where Vashti went after that, right? Because I thought about it, I said, what did she go, a Motel 6? Because he literally kicked her out. You think he let her keep her queenly bank account? I know she had grapes when she was in there. She ain't got no more grapes no more. Green grapes too, because green grapes, green grapes are the best. Them purple grapes taste like sugar. They taste like diabetes. <laughs> in food form. Green grapes are, are the best. Big gold grapes, I love them. She had grapes. She ain't got no grapes no more. Because grapes are a picture of comfort, a picture of wine, right? A picture of comfort, right? Grapes also become raisins, right? You get a lot to, out of them, but so, and I know raisins were big back then because when you look at uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 25 and 1 Samuel chapter uh, 30, you read where Abigail in 1 Samuel 25 uh, brought uh, David and his men, right? All those cakes of figs and uh, raisins, right? And then the same thing, when they wanted to go give that boy something, give him a jolt, right? After the um, Amalekites left that boy on the side of the road sick for three days when they wanted to give him a joke to pick him up they gave him two was it two cakes of figs and some raisins right so i know raisins were a big thing back then right that's just this just my my teaching up the teacher i just you know learned in my spare time but my spare time my spare time my spare time she has no more wine wine is such a comfort she has no more wine she has more comfort. Communion is bread and wine. That's communication with God. You get bread, he gives you word, bread and then wine, comfort. So he gives you word and comfort. We commune with God, right? For the bread would be the sun, right? And the wine. That comfort, the Holy Spirit. It's really the blood of Jesus Christ, right? But I don't see it, bread and wine. So bread, Jesus the bread, he's the bread of life. But who's the wine? It has to be the Holy Spirit, right? It's the blood that represents the blood of Jesus. But the wine, what does the wine represent? And representing the wine, I want to know what the wine does, is what I'm saying. 
so the bread gives me word. Sharp word, good word, right word, uh, tough word, hard word, it gives me word. The wine would be comfort. She has more grapes, so she has more wine. She has more wine, so she has more comfort, right? The man that once comforted her, right, and um, consoled her, and communed with her, and it's communication, right? Commune with her is not communing with her anymore. She has more comfort under the hands, with the hands, in the hands of our sword. And you don't know if she could have gotten married again because uh, if Joseph could put a, a, a tag on Mary that says, "I'm putting you on hold, I'm putting you away." Ah, Stuart's gonna take her out the house and put a hold on her and put her away. And while he's putting her away, marries Esther. This Persian law, this ain't Hebrew law. This king does represent God. Because this king is very to to totalitarian, like just total. Like it's very, what he says goes, right? Whether you like it or not, it goes. I don't care what you think about it, it goes. Well, that's the thing. I think that's how he's like God. Judgment, it goes. What God says, it goes. The beautiful part about it is even though he had an it goes mentality, right? He was not blind so that he could not see. Because when Esther, right, got the go down the book a little bit, going to the book a little bit, going a little bit further in the book or whatever, when Hanan, right, comes against uh Esther and um, her people, Esther and the other Hebrew people, right? So the king who signed a law with Haman doesn't say, okay, what can we do to Esther according to the law for what she said about Haman? No. He doesn't seek the law out. With Favashti, he sought the law out. Rest, he does not seek the law out to find out what he can do. Why? Because he knows he is the law. And he signed a document. No document to get rid of Prince Queen Vashti, but he want to know how can we get rid of her? What can we do to get rid of her? How can I put her in pain? With Esther, she is already in pain and under stress, right? That he realized it's at his hands. He's the one that did it. But he's the law. He cannot stop it. He already hung Haman and his whole family. What can he do for Esther? Esther's uncle, right? Mordecai. No, Esther's cousin. Right? Mordecai. Haven't read it in a while. Esther's cousin Mordecai, right? Um, 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 already had a good place in with the king because when uh, the guy's names were Big Fan and Teresh. I only remember them because they, they, they sound weird. Big Fan. Don't you mean bigger than? No, Big Fan. Bigger than what? Big Fan. Big Fan. Big Fan and Teresh. They had an assassination plot against the king and Mordecai ratted out these two men. Dangerous to do that. Because Mordecai worked in front of the palace steps. That's where he worked. Great place to work if you're helping the king, but at the same time, if Haman, right, is coming by, Haman hates you, right? So he told him, he walked, he came by and he said, every time I come by the front of the palace uh, steps, Mordecai never bows to me. So his wife told him, put in gallows, start making gallows for him. While Haman is making his gallows, while Satan is making his gallows, why your enemy is making gallows? Why your your friends are making gallows? Some of your friends are making gallows for you. While Haman was making gallows for Mordecai, the king is waking up in the middle of the night. God said, "Put me in remembrance of my word." Right? Remind me of what my word says about you. The king woke up, this king that, that, that resembles, supposed to represent God, right? He woke up in the middle of the night and he told one of his servants, read me um, from, read to me from the, the records of a certain book that he had. Apparently they kept records for everything. So read to me from this book of records. He woke up in the middle of the night, could not sleep. And he chose this specific book and this person started reading to him. Come to find out, when Mordecai um, rescued Big Dan and Teresh from the king, 
It was written in the books, but nothing was done about it. Sometimes we think God ain't doing nothing about what we what we care about. He don't care about what we care about. Nothing's being done. Apparently, what it seems to me is that it was recorded, but it was not told to the king how they were found out. So he said, wait a minute. He said, was anything done for Mordecai for this? And the servant said, I don't think so. It doesn't say anything here. While Haman was building the gallows. Since the king obviously did not step outside his palace. Because right outside the doors, right outside the doors, are people, are people plotting to assassinate you. And it must have been really open because now Mordecai, standing on the steps, heard their plot and their plan. Mordecai is in sackcloth and ashes on your steps. And if you lived in a different land, it was, uh, it was, appropriate, it was inappropriate for you to come out sackcloth and ashes. It looked like you were suffering. I'm very art, artsy and I can express suffering in art and also on my blog. When I put the pictures in the blog and I post them, I can express suffering. I can. I won't ever do it. I started to. I won't ever do it. Why? Was I in pain this morning? Oh, absolutely. I slept three hours because my the pain in my heart is it hurts so bad. I will never do it. I will never express pain in a blog because the blog itself represents God. It's for God. It's not for me. The art represents God. It's for God. It's not for me. Now, if God is sorrowful, if God is saying, hey, express this emotion, if God is saying, hey, uh, uh, talk about this, that's something different. Like you told me to remind you guys, say thank you to your fathers. If you have a good father, say thank you to them. I'm still, even though I found a great place, Etsy is a great place to find gifts, I still cannot find anything that's good enough for them. I'm going to have to buckle down and get something. Shipping times, you know? Buckle down and say thank you without it being a birthday. Just say thank you. Never hurts to say thank you. Mordecai sitting on the steps at uh, a sackcloth and ashes, right? Big Thesh, Big Thesh and the Teresh, they already plotted, they done, right? Hanging over there building gallows, so Mordecai is sitting on the temple steps, he's working at the temple steps, and he's actually watching Haman build the gallows for him. And he knows it. Haman kept riding by, and Mordecai kept standing up tall and not bowing. And Haman made comments, why don't you bow? And Mordecai calm, calm in the back. As an exile, in the exile land, he calm in the back. So the king wakes up in the middle of the night, can't sleep. And he says, read to me from the records of this, of this book. I, I forgot what it was. I haven't read this in a while. And the servant starts reading and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. What was done for Mordecai for, for that one act? Nothing, I don't know. So while, so while, the, while God, while, while, while the king, right, while, while Haman is building the gallows, God is speaking to the king's heart and waking him up at night. Having him think about Mordecai, having him think about you, right, to, while, the, while, the, while, the, while the enemy is building gallows, while Satan is building gallows, God is speaking to the heart of the king. What does it matter, what does it matter when you build gallows for me if I no longer live in the vicinity? He built gallows, like, in public for Mordecai. But the thing is, we talk about position, perception, position, and the condition, right? It doesn't, Mordecai was about to get promoted. Haman was going to be hanging on his own gallows, and Mordecai was going to have Haman's job, right? So what does it matter when you build gallows for me? I said, y'all ain't got to worry about me. You want to find me, find that man right there. I'm being the sound teacher. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh. My thing is you don't need to worry about what the people can find. You need to worry about what the God can find. Because what was done for him? 
the very next day, Haman came in and the king said, Haman, he said, yes. He said, what should be done for a man that honors the king? And Haman said, well, the king should put his robe on him and put a crown on him and put a horse, put him on a horse, a white horse and let him ride through the town. And better than anything, here we go, this is the best part. He said there should be a servant, to, right as he rides on a horse, there should be a servant that, that, that leads the horse, that says this is how the king manners, honors a man who, uh, who takes care of him. This is how the king honors a man who takes care of him. Well, he said, good job. Do that for Mordecai. So I'm not, and the Bible says Haman will tell his friends those, those were gallows for Mordecai. So while he's doing all of that, I believe this was God giving, trying to give Haman an out, right? Not trying, but giving Haman an out, giving, okay, so here, you can, you can stop now. Because your pride is going to find you out. You can stop now. That's what I say, I don't care. I'll do anything. I don't care who talks about me, who does anything to me. It's always been that way. I don't have to do nothing to you. God is finally, God will find you out. I do nothing to you. I mean, people, I'm hearing my stuff and people are lying back and back and front. But I don't tattle. I don't, I don't tattle, 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 tattle. I don't do that. I was like, wow. They said that? People you wouldn't expect. It's so much so that I'm a person that I, I dealt with normally, right? So even a good cheat did something was done, and even Harmony said, What? We just discussed this. Well, did you confront her? I said, No. I said, I did my best to confront her. I told her. There was someone, uh, someone requested to do something for me that they cannot do because the last time they tried to help me with it or do it with me, they left me at the church and forgot me. And I can't be walking home from Sear Falls Pike. I just can't. So I said, no, Harmony brings me to church. Harmony takes me home. That's my 15 minutes. Harmony and I have been through so much. I said, I have a half an hour at best with Harmony every single week. I said, I don't want to lose that. If I lose that, when I was at Christina's house, I lost that. And it, it really took a toll on my life. I said, I don't want to lose that. So I said, no. And we explained it, explained it, explained it. And I explained it. I said the text to both of them, explained it so nobody could say I said something to one that I didn't say to the other. And the person tried, they called the next week, was like, I'm coming to get you. No. And so what people would do to cover themselves, they make up stories. Because I didn't say no to your life. I didn't say no, you can't live. And so the thing is, I said, the Holy Spirit says they do not want to come and get you for church. They want to be seen with you for a reason. There's a reason. Because when I need to ride to the doctor, and when I need to ride somewhere else, right to another doctor, they can be found. A specialist, they can be found. One time I was told to call them for a ride to the doctor. So I did, and they said, okay, I'm busy, but if you need a ride to the doctor, call an ambulance! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. And you want me to what? Trust you with what? If I can trust you to with my health, and you scream and call an ambulance, anybody that knows me knows I don't like ostentatious things. I, ambulances are ostentatious. I hate ambulances. I've been in a lot of them. Harmony knows that. If I call Harmony and ask her, or Jess, if I call I want them to ask her to take me, I need to go to the doctor, they know I am not going to the doctor with no ambulance. Kirk knows. He's like, he won't even say call ambulance no more. I hate ambulances. I gotta go to the doctor. I wanna go real quiet. I don't want a lot of people know when I'm going. It's just too much. Ambulance, then everybody looking at you is just, you know, I don't want that problem. If you can't handle, and that's that's a ministry that you run. We're you supposed to, be able to get doctor's appointments done. If you can't handle that. I said, Harmony's already paid into this. This is her layer for herself, treasures of heaven. I want her to get treasures for this. She is doing this. 
I said she needs a day off or she needs a break, then, then okay. But it, it just kept pushing and pushing. God sees. Because a different story was told. God sees. And I didn't say nothing. I didn't, the, 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 that story is just like a, a scrape off the top. Because Harmony knows the whole thing. She was like, what is going on? I asked Harmony first before I said, I said, Harmony, I thought about it all week. I want to keep you as my ride. Because then she kept going to Harmony asking. She didn't come to me. I said, I want to keep you as my ride. I said, you are, we've been through a lot. We've been through scabies. We've been through a lot. We've been through Harmony had to stand outside my door, outside the glass door, the front door for the apartment building. She had to put my birthday present down. I had to uh, wait until she backed away 10 feet, open up the door, pick my birthday present up, close the door, and then she could come back and we could talk through the glass. And through that glass, Harmony told me Jesus is your identity. Don't forget, Jesus is your identity. That birthed the poem that y'all see on here, that birthed the, the track, that birthed, the, that birthed it all for me, Jesus, my identity. There's a whole thing that I did for that. Because Harmony was there, nobody else was. My little died on Thanksgiving weekend. Harmony took me to the hospital. I'm not saying other people have not helped me. But if, I, if, if, if somebody's laying up for themselves treasure to heaven, and this is an easy treasure in heaven for her. Because I know every no Sunday morning, 9 15, be down there. So she have to do nothing. She got, she got work, she got school. I'm thinking I want to be an easy treasure in heaven for her. I want to be an easy treasure in heaven for Pastor David. I take the, I take the Pastor David the same way I take the Pastor Harmony. I, no, I'm with Pastor David and Miss Andrea. No, you can't do it. No, leave me alone. What, what do people think if they come and ask me that if they can disciple me? No! People, some people don't want to see you, right? They don't want to see you. Um, they don't want to help you until they see somebody else helping you. Y'all have seen me for 40 years begging for help, begging for um, somebody to mentor me and God. And what I was told by the same person was, no, I will not be that person to you. I was told that by that person. You gotta be careful. I don't hold things to people count, but I remember. No, I will not do. Do my things. Why are you asking now? 